All right. So today's presentation, first of all, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak today and for all of you for showing up early on a weekend day. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, of course, to uh, Stephen Short for inviting me here. He's the, the mastermind behind The Real Truth About Health. So my topic today is how to make aging optional is being vegan enough. And to make this very personal, about 10 years ago, when I lived in Orlando, I, I, I went to the Real Truth About Health in person, when it was in person. And, um, you know, it, it really changed my outlook on medicine and, and health. And I, I never imagined 10 years ago that I would be able to be a lecturer here. So, so this is definitely special for me. And uh, I think you're going to hear some things that you've never heard before that are that are definitely important. My website is drjosh.com, drjosh.com. And let's start. So my background, as you heard, trained at Harvard, board certified, licensed in 14 states, used to be the medical director at Hippocrates. I have two degrees in biochemistry. I'm not gonna go too nerdy into the biochemistry, but just understand that that's the background. I mean, I, I was studying biochemistry as a teenager. This is a language I love. Uh, I worked at the, the True North Fasting Center in Northern California for a couple of years. So, you know, it was amazing. Patients would, would come to us and, you know, for, for many weeks, they would, would pay us lots of money and all they would do is just drink water. So it was amazing to see that all these chronic, many of these chronic diseases could easily get reversed or stopped by something simple like drinking water. My focus, as you've heard, is longevity and regenerative regeneration education. I'm double board certified in lifestyle medicine and emergency medicine, went to Harvard and MIT. And the I also I also like to start my presentations with um, with a summary. If if you guys get bored or you want to think like, is this worth me sitting through? This, this, these are gonna be my conclusions. Eat plants, exercise. Avoid processed foods, reduce your stress, use smart supplementation, and specifically, we're going to talk about NMN and nitric oxide. Fasting, optimize your sleep, track your own health, avoid hospitals, and find a community. And I have my own disclaimers. This, this is not intended as medical advice. Please consult your own doctor before making any changes. If your doctor doesn't feel comfortable with this topic, consider consulting with me. This presentation is not endorsed by the FDA or the FTC. And I am not being paid by the food industry, including big sugar, and I'm not being paid by big pharma. So does being vegan increase your life expectancy? And I believe the answer is yes, it does. And here's the data. If you look, this, this study, uh, one of the Adventist studies compared vegans to non-vegetarians, and they found that the death rate of the vegans, 5.4 per thousand person years, was lower than the non than the non-vegans at 6.61. And why is it? Why why would if you're just eating plants and avoiding animal products, why would you live longer? Here are some of the theories why. Number one. Being eating plants, you're going to lower your risk of heart disease, specifically a diet that's lower in saturated fat and cholesterol, because guess what? There's, there's no cholesterol in plants, folks. That can help lower the risk of heart disease. Number two, eating plants will lower certain types of cancers. Uh, plants are high in fiber, whereas animal products have no fiber. Vegan diets are high in antioxidants and phytochemicals, Animal products normally don't have phytochemicals, which have been linked to lower risk of certain types of cancers. The third item is many people, if you, if you look at the studies, people who are vegan or eat plants tend to have a lower body mass index, be less likely to be overweight or obese. And this lower rate of obesity is associated with longevity. Number four is people who eat plants have improved gut health. And uh, again, I think that goes back to if you're eating lots of plants, you're getting real fiber, which promote, promotes a healthy microbiome in the gut, and then in turn will reduce your inflammation. And number five, people who eat plants 
normally have better control of their blood sugar because there's something about the plants when you eat them, it improves the insulin sensitivity and blood sugar control, which in turn will lower your risk of type two diabetes. And then number six is that vegans are exposed to lower levels of toxins. And I can give a whole lecture just on this. We're not, I'll, I'll go over some of the issues, but, but just understand I, I could talk for hours just on the issue of toxins. And when, when I say toxins, what am I talking about? Well, let me just give you an example. The, the, the typical, some of the toxins that you find in meat, heavy metals, plastics, plastics that we, we, all, we all used to and using in our modern society, many of these plastics are loaded with chemicals that can cause obesity, chemicals like um, uh, BPA. For example, you may have heard of BPA. Okay, another toxin in meat, estrogens. And, and that's because guess what? If, if meat is from an animal, a mammal that has sex hormones like estrogen, if you eat an animal's flesh, you're getting those hormones. Pollutants like PCBs, pesticides, endotoxins. Endotoxins are the cell wall of the gram-negative bacteria, of, of the bacteria in the gut of the, of the animals that you, that you might eat. Uh, new 5GC is a sugar that is only found in animals and it's not found in humans, but if you eat animal products, you're exposed to this weird sugar that the body can react to causing inflammation. Heme iron, iron is general is good, but heme iron can be toxic. And there's heme iron in animal products, but not in plant products. Antibiotics, and it's sad, the, the largest user of antibiotics in our society is um, animals that are being uh, grown uh, and farm that, that are being factory raised. Uh, antibiotics are used to increase the yield, but unfortunately, if you give animals antibiotics and then you, you slaughter them for people to eat, the people are gonna get some of those antibiotics inside of them. All right, when you cook meat, it produces what are called heterocyclic amines, uh, HCAs, they're the blackened area of charred meat. And another, another in the same category are called PAHs, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. It's when the fat drips onto a heat source and you, the smoke can transfer some of these carcinogen carcinogenic pHs into your meat. Um, advanced glycation end products, we'll talk about this a little bit, and TMAO, and oxidized cholesterol. And just so you understand, this list is not inclusive. There are many other toxins found in animal products. So are there any, are there any toxins found in plants? Yes, there are, but it turns out the higher up you go on the food chain, there's, there's more and more toxins. And where do people, as an example, an endocrine disruptor, uh, a man-made chemical called dioxins, this is data on this slide from the government, from the EPA, where do people get most of these endocrine disruptor toxins like dioxins? And you, and you can see the biggest exposure is from beef, dairy, milk, chicken, pork, fish, and egg. Sure, you can breathe some of it in the air. There's a little bit in the soil, not much in the water. But if, if most of your diet is from animals, you're gonna get a much bigger dose of these dioxins. And it would make sense that if, if you're eating animal products, that the more you eat, you're gonna have higher levels of toxins because you are what you eat. And there's a French study from 2017 that backs it up. It basically compared vegans to non-vegans and it found that there was about a factor of 10 difference in that vegans had 10 times lower levels of these toxins specifically furans, dioxins, and PCBs than people who ate the animal products. So uh, translation, you want to eat from the bottom of the food chain, not from the top. And how in the world do these PCBs, these, these fatty toxins build up in living organisms? Um, it's through the food chain. It's uh, number one is over time, these toxins can accumulate in a living system. We call that bioaccumulation. And then the concept that as it, the further you go up on the food chain, you get higher and higher levels of these toxins. That's called biomagnification. And an example of this is with PCBs. And here's just an example. In seawater, the, the concentration of PCBs is 0 0.000002 milligrams per kilogram of fat, whereas 
if you're a bird, um, you're going to have a seabird 110 and, and it goes up. You know, if, if you're a plant vegetable, if you're a vegetable, a sea vegetable, you know, you're going to have lower levels like eight or 10. So again, you want to get on the bottom of the food chain. And I think this is one of the key reasons. I think toxins, because what do toxins do? Biochemically, they interrupt and they, they hurt the normal biochemical processes and they stop uh, animals from reaching their biologic potential. So this is what I'm gonna be talking about, how to make aging optional. I know many of you, not all of you, many of you already eat a lot of plants. You know, many of you are already vegan. So is that enough? And my point is, it's not enough. There are other things that you can do. And that's what I'm gonna talk about next. I, I, want, I want to not just improve your lifespan, but also, also your health span. That as you live to a long age, you, it's an enjoyable time too. So the first point I would make is even if you're eating just plants, you can still make the wrong choices. You need to stop eating what I call CRAP, carbonated drinks, refined sugars, artificial foods, and processed foods. We can just call this processed foods. You know, in, in this country, Oreos are vegan. If your diet is mainly Oreos or things like it, you're not going to be very healthy. So just stop it. I know it's easier said than done because in the processed food are high levels of salt, oil, and sugar, which are highly addictive. You know, our brains, you know, evolved over millions of years to specifically crave these things in high calorie dense foods. And unfortunately, if, if most of your diet is high in salt, oil, and sugar, your life expectancy is not going to be good. And the quality of your life is not good either. So yes, it is possible to be an unhealthy vegan and, and you know, full disclosure for myself, you know, as I made that transition uh, 10, 10 years ago, um, you know, I, I just thought, you know, it's, it's good enough for me just to eat the plants. And I, it doesn't matter if they're processed or not. Well, I was wrong. And um, so, you know, wh whether you make that transition overnight or you take years like me, it's like the point is make that transition. You know, processed foods are not health promoting. And, and here's just an example with me um, feeding my son processed sugar. You know, I feel bad looking at this photo from 10 years ago. Uh, but yeah, I was eating the same type of processed foods. Not good. And, and you can see uh, on the left here is like, yeah, I, I no longer because I cut out all this garbage, all this processed food, all, the, all these animal products, you know, I no longer have, you know, puffy cheeks. My blood pressure is no longer high. I'm not, I'm no longer, you know, 50 pounds overweight. Um, I'm much happier. And I want to be able to share that with as many people as possible. So how does, do things like added sugar cause aging? Well, I've got two examples. One way is that sugar spikes when the sugar spike, because if you eat a sugary meal right after that sugar gets quickly absorbed, the sugar levels in your bloodstream will spike and then it'll cause your body's insulin to secrete and then you're going to crash. And that, that the spike, it's a spike and crash is not good for your health. Um, the other problem is as you have a sweeter and sweeter environment in your bloodstream, your own body will basically caramelize the proteins that you have and, and form what are called advanced glycation end products, AGEs. And these lead to degeneration and early, early death and disability. So what I'm about to share with you, if, if you had told me this 10 years ago, I'd say science fiction could be possible, but I don't think so. But I can assure you, this is all real. Imagine turning back your biologic clock, and for that matter, that of your pets, if you have pets. Imagine cloning people. I, no, I'm not going to suggest that we do this, but it is technologically possible today. You can, in a lab, biochemically, you can convert skin fiber mass to egg and sperm cells and then fertilize and implant to clone. So I, I don't think this is going on in, in our country, but I'm pretty sure this is going on elsewhere in the world. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to focus today on cloning people, 
But I am, I am, am going to say that this is very powerful, tech, powerful technology. And why, why don't we use it to promote life and, and make our lives better? So why why is this all important? What we're doing is is tricking the body to slow down aging. Some people may call this biohacking, which is okay. Um, whatever you call it, the bottom line is that we need to, um, I think, promote and look out for ourselves and, and that of our our families. And I also, I respect people who say, you know what, Dr. Josh, why don't we wait? Why don't we wait until this is settled science in terms of reversing aging? Why don't we wait until there's the good double blind placebo controlled studies showing that, you know, if you, if you take these actions, if you take these supplements, that boom, your biologic age is going to improve, you're going to have more energy. Why don't we just wait? Well, the problem is if we wait for those settled science to be there, in 50 or 100 years, I don't think we're going to be around. And, and I think that's one of the driving forces and why I think you should take action on this, not, not in five or 10 or 50 years, but today. So Queen Elizabeth II recently died. Does anyone there know uh, what, what the cause of her death was on her death certificate? If you could just put in the comments. Um, Anyone know on her death certificate what the cause of death was? And it's okay if you don't. So heart attack. No, it wasn't a heart attack, but I'll, I'll show you. And, and we're gonna zoom in here on her death certificate. And it wasn't listed as cancer, you're right. It was Someone said natural causes. No, not natural causes, but old age. And to me, that's the same thing. And I think that's the reality. If we live long enough, whether that's 96 years like the queen did, or whether it's 110 or 130 or 150. And yes, I think that given the new science we have on longevity, 150 is not out of the picture. That... The, this is a paradigm shift. Instead of thinking about the cause of death, things like cancer, heart disease, no, 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 no. Why don't we think about it as old age? If we can prevent you from aging, you're not gonna get all these chronic diseases. So yeah, that's not Queen Elizabeth, but it is an example that sometimes you can tell age just by looking at someone's face. So what is aging? Aging is the progressive physiological changes in a, in a person or organism that leads to senescence. Well, what is senescence? <coughs> senescence is a decline of biological functions and of an organism's ability to adapt to metabolic stress. <laughs> <laughs>